You are awakened by a blood-curdling scream. You pop up from your bunks in your gang's barracks, dreary-eyed and half hungover from the previous late night of drinking and fraternizing. It's still dark outside, and it takes a few moments for your eyes to clear enough to see even semi-straight. Oh, what oh. the? F- <clears throat> you hear that? <clears throat> yeah. I mean, wait, was that me? Sometimes that's me. I get night terrors. You scream like this? Ah! Wait, how does the scream sound? That was pretty pretty <laughs> accurate, actually. Yeah. <laughs> you you don't scream like that in bed. I've heard I've heard it before. It doesn't sound like that. That's something uh, else. Okay, hold on. Where's my knife? Oh wait, I have it right here. Uh, yeah. Uh, l- I sleep l- with let's it. go. Let's go. Uh huh. Do yep. we we run towards where the, it came from? I guess. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't really pinpoint it since it awoken you from your. Your slumber, yeah. you but doing that thing we were talking into your alarm clock. Do we hear any like <laughs> rustling or anything else? Like no, any other sounds? But you look around the, the room and okay. there's nothing going on in there. Uh, so you f- figure it's probably somewhere outside. Okay. Uh, so you and then Jasper's just out. J- Jas- Jasper? Yeah, Jasper, wake up. Wait, hey. wait, look it. And I'm gonna undo his blanket and I was like, it's just a sack of potatoes right here. And a, and a mop for a hair. He doesn't even have hair. Wait, since when has he been potatoes? I don't think he was potatoes ever. You look over at the bed next to the one you're looking at, and Jasper is passed out drunk in that one. Oh, there he is. Oh. <laughs> silly, <laughs> silly boy. Okay, I'm going to go over to Jasper and try to shake him awake. He, Come on, bud. Come on. We got to get out of here. Unable to be roused, as we know Jasper has a bit of a drinking issue. He moans and shrugs your hands off as he turns over in bed and pulls the blanket up over his face. Ah, oh, shit. It happened again. I guess we'll just leave him here. Uh, let's go. Uh-huh. Let me get my shirt. What? Okay. <laughs> I'm just you, kidding. I don't wear a shirt. You don't wear a shirt. <laughs> I know it's a bit of funny. <laughs> oh god, a room spinning. Oh, okay. Let All right, we we proceed go. out. <laughs> okay. Uh each you roll perception checks. Oh boy. It's, it's so early for a perception check. Yeah, I barely woke up. Mm. I forget my skills. 18 plus 6. <laughs> well, Ooh. you beat me. Uh 18 total. Okay, still both very good. Uh as you rush to go outside to try to find out where the scream came from, you can see the door to Tostito's bunk. Uh, John, you can see that it is cracked. Um, not really sure what that means. You don't really remember if he sleeps with his door open, like likes a little draft. But Daisy, you know that Tostito sleeps with his door closed every single night and does not wake until the sun rises. And so as you run past it, you can see that it is open. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, shift my eyes over real quick and narrow them at the door and be like, wait a second. Something's up. Totito! He, he, he doesn't sleep with his door open. He's not here. Come on, let's look around. Yeah, maybe, well, maybe he had to go to the bathroom. Maybe, How long has it been since we saved him? Uh, About three nights. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> we just keep losing him. Okay, maybe he just went downstairs for like a, a little nightcap or something. And screamed like a girl? Uh, yeah, I or don't know. Or a very maybe feminine stepped, man, which is fine. Maybe he stepped on a Lego or something. Or D4. Or D4. Those are sharp. Oh, yeah. So we run downstairs we, or wherever, we, like, the main look, area is. I don't know the, how this, the layout of this building. We check the building. Yeah. Um, there's no one else in, in this particular building. It's just more your bunk. Um, the rest of the gang is situated in bunks around the camp where, because you are Tostito's regulators, hmm. you are in the main bunk house. Oh, so Tostito kinda, runs a bunch of people. Okay, yeah. so we're with all of our people, but we are in our own little house. Yeah, you're, you're kind of in like the executive's bunk. Yeah. Gotcha. Tostito's in charge. Okay, we're so then- We're second in line, and then there's correct. everyone else. Correct. If that's okay. the case, we run outside, maybe try to knock on doors and get the rest of our well, gang Yeah, this is alerted. people. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm out there. Yeah. We have an alarm our, our, our or something, right? Our is gone. Yeah, as yeah. you as you run outside, um, you roll dexterity check. Uh, they, who goes out the door first? I should ask. Uh, yeah. It would probably be John because he's the melee. Okay, yeah, roll a dexterity check. A dexterity check Save. or a dexterity saving throw? Okay. I rolled a uh, eighteen. Okay, uh, you were your foot clips something on the ground uh, that you couldn't really see because you rushed out in such a hurry. And where you almost topple over, you quickly pirouette on your heel and turn to see a body on the ground. Oh, hey, wait. 
No way, Jasper's inside drunk. Hey, what, what's going on here? I checked the body. I, I just got to run into you, so I'll also help with that. What, what the hell? Body is motionless on the ground. Uh, roll a... Are you both looking yeah, at the body? Do we recognize this person? Yeah, you do. This is Rusty. Rusty? Yeah, he's one of the, he's one of the new initiates. <gasps> oh, the little of, guy? Uh, yeah. Oh, he was so sweet. Oh, man. Okay, hold on. Maybe he's all, maybe he just got knocked out. No, I mean, him. we call him Rusty because he's kind of rusty. So it's what do you not, mean by that? He wasn't very good. No, he was just learning. Well, it looks like he's dead now, so that's kind of an he indication do, he, of his abilities. He was good with knots, remember? He did that one little knot. It was kind of cute. It made it look like a giraffe. Well, this is not cute. Okay, well, just <laughs> check him and see if he's okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, we, we do a medicine check, do, I guess? Yeah, medicine yeah, or, yeah. Uh, roll a medicine check. We both do it or? Yeah. If you're both checking him. 15 plus 3. 18? Yeah, mm-hmm. you beat me. Yeah, uh, his body seems very cold to the touch. Uh, if you are thinking that this is the person who screamed, colder than you've been around a lot of dead bodies. He got colder faster than what you it would have. expect him to. Uh, and yeah. He's probably been dead for a while. Would yeah. be our assumption. Would be your assumption. Okay. Yeah. Um, but with an 18, when you're doing the physical assessment of the body, you do see two puncture marks in his neck. Oh my God. Look at this. Look at that. God, he's been shot twice in the neck. By tiny, tiny bullets. I've never seen bullets so small. Uh, Really? You're a gunslinger. Well, but yeah, my bullets are usually pretty big. Yeah, I got big bullets too. What do you think did this? I I don't know. You're the gunslinger. A snake? Maybe it was a snake. That's a a big snake. (laughs) It was. What? Who said that? It was. As you turn around, there's another sentry guard who is standing there. Oh, thank God. Someone who's okay and not about to collapse. Wide, wide-eyed, <laughs> ghost face white. It, it was... It was... Tostito. Wait, what? Yeah, what do you, where what do you is mean? he? Yeah, is we, what is, who screamed? Where did Tostito what go? What is going on? Why is there not an alarm sounded? You guys are shit at this. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> what did you just say? It was... Tostito. What was Tostito? It, it screamed? It was, it was Tostito. You're not making any sense. That's I'm all. I'm shaking him. Uh, yeah, you, you try to shake him and rouse him out of, out of the shock that he seems saying? to be in. Uh, he does not come to any more than all he's able to. I slap to. him. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so I'm really hoping you go there. I slap him. Come on. <laughs> Give me some uh, uh, Stop, stop. So, this is ridiculous. You're not helping at all. And I pull her. I'm standing behind her and I pull her out of the way. And then I grab him and start shaking him. Uh, uh, make more sense. Look. And I slap him. Slap him, slap him too. <laughs> it was. There's another guy behind him. Yeah. Everyone's lined up. Airpan. Yeah. Yes, thank you. <laughs> he has to say it. Uh, oh, it I, I've, I've never seen him move like that. It was toast, toasty to right up on him and. and Bit him and then, oh, kinky. And then, and he just points out to the prairie in the direction, <laughs> off in the direction, in a direction. Oh, <laughs> wait, you're saying he he came up, he bit this person on the neck like this, killed him, and then ran away. I I don't know what all happened so fast. Okay, and you're sure it was Tostito? Maybe it was someone who just had like the same hat. He came from the. Did he say, I'm Tostito, and then ran away? How do you know it was him? Because I, cause I know what Tostito looks like. I mean, he is the boss. And he came from the, like. the bunkhouse. He came from our bunk? Yeah. Okay. Who's, are there any other dead bodies, or is it just this one? Just him. Okay. Okay. Oh. It just, obviously, this is a misunderstanding. Maybe somebody was disguised as Tostito and did this, like a bad guy. Like somebody took his shape. But could that have been the case? I mean, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a new recruit. I don't know. You're supposed to be the guy in charge. <laughs> sure. I guess theoretically that's a possibility. Maybe just someone had a big a little mask on that looks like him. And he would never do something it like this. could be a body snatcher situation, I yeah, guess. Yeah, Rusty was his favorite. He told me that right before bed. He said, oh, I love Rusty. He's my favorite. I can't wait for him okay, to do something. Okay, but did he Did he lick his lips when he said it or something? You know, it was dark, so I didn't actually see if he did that. But I didn't hear a... <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's okay. I mean, so here's the thing. We killed a vampire. 
so we, I mean, we knew that that Tostito had been abducted by a the, vampire. That vampire, yes. Yeah, okay. and that when he left. I okay. don't think any of you guys saw that, though, I if know, I remember when, correctly. When That's he, what I'm saying. I don't think we, we put it together. I think we just. At this point, it. you're starting to put it together. The way Daisy's playing it. I like the idea that can't. we're talking about it right now like this in front of the guy who's just, like, why does a ghost still like trembling as the dead body is behind us twitching? The way Daisy's playing it is that she just can't, she can't reckon that her her hero, her boss is somehow compromised. So I'm playing it like I'm in disbelief because I'm in denial of what has happened to him. Not so much that I don't know that it clearly has happened. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? So yeah. you do what you want to do. Uh, Rambork knows I'm, bad shit happens. <laughs> that's where I'm at with it. Where I'm just like, oh, that can't be right. Terrible backstory mm. that I'm writing in my head right now <laughs> as I say this. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Well, this, so does that mean that like we're in charge now? Because I guess our boss is gone. Well, I, I'm in charge, yeah. I'm his second in command. As I said, we're in charge now. Uh, yeah, I'm in charge, yeah. yeah. We got second, it. Second, you third after me. Uh -huh. Smaller font. That's as high as side, I can count. Side. We know, we've established that. So yeah. that's, we're working on four. That's a big number. Okay. All right. Well, uh, everybody just calm down. Is everybody outside? Did every, did People are starting did, to come okay. out at this point. Everybody yeah. just calm down. There's been some sort of misunderstanding here. Um we are going to we're going to investigate this as as Tocito's uh regulators we will we will get to the bottom of this mystery. Uh if everybody just want to maybe pack pack Rusty up in the most respectful way which is what? Tiny little body like a like a little sweet coffin with some flowers and stuff. If you could do that. Okay. Um, yeah, we got it. I think that's how it works and yeah. then that's why we take their measurements when they first get here. Yeah. We tell them it's for the clothes, but uh, it's for the coffin. <laughs> All oh. the other new initiates are like, <laughs> oh. anyway, he's just joking. <laughs> Don't worry, everybody. This is a great job, and you have a long life ahead of you. <laughs> All of you. Yeah, it's the Wild West. Long life. <laughs> this, is a, this is a prestigious <laughs> association to be a part of our gang. Um, yep. Right? That's right. John? Uh confidence yep. remember just go ahead and uh bury them out back next to all the other new recruitment no. like old pets no. all next to old pets that happen to be halfling sized and really old people who died of very old age after having a happy happy life working for us okay okay yeah, yep yeah yep so all right did anyone get, else get, see get any, it. did anyone uh, else uh, see anything uh, else uh, okay so oh, yes, hold sir. on i'm asking yes, a sir. question did anyone else see anything anywhere? Hey, are you going to go after him or what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You hear from the back. <laughs> Which way did he go? What's, what's her name? <laughs> my name? <laughs> my, my name? Dave Matthew is short for DM. <laughs> Hurry the fuck up. My name's Dusty. Dusty? Dusty what? <laughs> Dusty. Dusty Woods. Dusty Woods? DW? Yeah, oh, okay. I guess technically, yeah. <laughs> ben but, really wanted the, the people, initials to be. People DM. call me Dusty. Okay, Dusty, uh, you take care of Rusty. We <laughs> Dusty gotta go. And Rusty. <laughs> Uh, are, are there horses we can get on to go fast? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to jump on. John Rick Horton <laughs> running out into the parrot. You oh, right, fool, right, get on right. a horse. Okay. I, I got I got fast movement now, though. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking off towards the, the direction of it. <laughs> and I guess I'll just wait for John to get there four I, hours I, later. I mount a horse and right after him. Okay. Give me a survival check, both of you. 15 plus 6. Yeah, you beat me a lot of stuff here. 7 plus very wise. Uh, whatever I rolled. Survival? 4. Okay, so 21 total for Daisy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you can see because you rolled so high, you see footsteps leading in the direction that the initiate pointed in. Okay. Uh, and because you rolled so high, you can tell that this figure, whomever, if it is Tostito, they are moving at a lightning speed. As the footsteps aren't too heavy into the ground, it is almost like they are gliding. Are they like crazy far apart? Like the stride is like <laughs> it's a it's a long stride. Mm, okay, and you could tell that it is it is moving quick. Wow, he's moving quick. I've never seen anything move like this before. <laughs> I didn't think he could do that. Um, let's just try to. Should I try to shoot him? I don't really want to shoot him. I mean, we might have to shoot him. Okay. Uh, hey, stop. 
I mean, we oh, can't, he's, he's gone. Yeah, we don't see no. him. Nowhere near you. Oh, okay. You so sat I, there for 10 minutes talking to people, and this figure we is like, moving at an alarming rate. I thought we were, like, keeping pace with no. him in some way. Okay, Oh, sorry. no, you've been standing still for 10 minutes, <laughs> and he, and again, he's been moving at a very fast okay, speed. Never mind. You cannot see uh, just, nor talk to them. We're just going to keep keep going until we get to him, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I guess or, we just need to follow these tracks. Um, let's keep going. Yeah, it's... Uh, Faster. Okay, so you're... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the moon hangs low in the sky, casting a soft glow across the vast expanse of the prairie. The air is crisp and cool, and the only sound is the rhythmic clip-clop of horse hooves on the hard-packed earth. You ride in a loose formation, your horses snorting and tossing their heads as they charge steadily forward. The stars twinkle overhead like diamonds in the inky blackness, and despite the feeling of looming dread weighing heavy on your hearts, you can't help but feel a sense of freedom and adventure as you ride across the open plains. Your sense is keen and honed, ever on the lookout for any signs of danger or movement on the infinite horizon. Your movements and motions smooth and practiced. While you haven't been in these parts long, you've ridden across countless deserts and grasslands to the point where any unknown expanse feels like the grounds you first learned to ride on. Occasionally, the quiet of the night is broken by the distant howl of a coyote or the hoot of an owl. You keep your weapons close at hand as you've had one too many midnight rendezvous with rustlers and bandits. As the night wears on, the sky begins to lighten in the east, signaling the approach of dawn. As the sun rises over the vista, you lower your hats to shield your eyes from the harsh morning light. As the celestial sphere raises higher, you can make out the dark outline of what seems to be a cityscape off in the distance and the quickened footsteps of whoever or whatever it is you're chasing lead straight towards it. Tired from the overnight run, your horses begin to whimper, whinny, and slow down. Luckily, you make it to the town that you saw in the distance just in time, where a large sign over the top of the entrance reads, Never Rust. The town is a bustling hub of activity with steam-powered machinery and gadgets alongside the traditional Western culture. The streets are lined with brick and iron buildings adorned with ornate carvings and metalworks, and the air is thick with steam and the sound of chugging machinery. The main plaza is adorned with a magnificent steam-powered fountain which spouts water high into the air with a satisfying hiss and clank. The centerpiece of the town is a massive steam engine which powers everything from the town's lighting and heating to the water supply and transportation. The engine is housed in a grand brick building with giant chimneys spewing steam high into the air. The trains that come and go from the town are powered by this engine, transporting people and goods, keeping the commerce chugging along. There's a giant star on the side of the mortared monolith, indicating that the sheriff's office is located inside as well. A balcony high up overlooks all the streets that seem to emerge from this location, the epicenter of the design of the town, resembling that of a circular gear. And what looks like some sort of jailhouse is attached, with steam-powered bars and doors that have a type of lock on them that you have never seen before. The town's main street is a mix of the saloon, general stores, inn, and workshops. The saloon is the heart of the town's social scene, where cowboys and engineers gather to drink, play cards, and swap stories. The general store sells everything from cowboy hats and boots to steam-powered gadgets and gizmos. The workshops are filled with engineers and mechanics tinkering away on their latest inventions. Wow, this is a really fancy town. I never liked a lot of this fancy horse shit. Like, what do you need a smart fountain for? Well, uh, you know, they, it, it gives you sparkling water, which is nice for like a little refresh, refreshment. Doesn't make my piss sparkle. Uh, I, actually, I don't know. I don't think it does, Do which wanna... makes me question why it even needs to be here. Okay, well, this is 
nice. Uh, we should yeah. probably find like some help to see if they've seen anything. Maybe the sheriff is starting there. We should probably talk to the sheriff uh, about what happened. Yeah. So let's get some get get our bearings here. Let's uh, first get these horses watered and uh, us watered, if you know what I mean, and uh, go to the saloon. Yeah. I have a terrible hangover. Well, then you know what cures that. Water. More drinks. Let's go. <laughs> As you start All making right. your way into town, uh, Jasper would love to be. Oh shit, Jasper, we have to buy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we'll we'll send him a letter. As you start walking into town, two guards, one from each side of the entrance, with rifles that they're carrying across their chest, put their hands out. Oh, all right, easy, easy, easy. Oh, hello, hello. Uh, State your business. Uh, town, town business, saloon business. Like we want to go to it and purchase things there. Wild, uh, wild west. Subscribe. Like. <laughs> Comment. <laughs> what? Where are y'all from? Not not from here. Sorry. Uh, where, where are what we? What kind of jibba jabba is that, that you are using? Sorry. It's uh, we're, we've been riding for a long time, uh, mm. it, all through the night, actually. So we're just exhausted. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, we'd like to, to get a, a rest at the saloon, maybe the inn. Would that, would that be all right? Or do we have to like sign something? So you ain't, you ain't bringing nothing to the town? No, of course not. Just, oh. just our. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, Wait, don't say yeah. Well, we're bringing something. No, what are we bringing? We're we're bringing joy, um, joy, peace on earth. Uh, well, we ain't bringing nothing. <laughs> 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 Listen, we were we were tracking someone. All right, we just, just we some someone someone got killed, and we got to figure out what happened. And we've been following yeah. their their tracks, and it leads here. Roll a perception check, two of you. Which is not a crazy thing to tell someone. Like that is why we're here. <laughs> Oh, there we go. 19 plus seven. Thank goodness, because I got a seven. Okay. <laughs> so 26. Uh, Daisy, you're pretty engaged with these two guards at trying to talk your way into or out of. I'm, <laughs> you're not even sure what, I don't think. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> John, you see a figure approaching in the, from the distance, and it looks like his hand with that high of a perception check is right next to his holstered weapon and he is walking straight towards you. Does he look like he's also one of the guards? No, he does not. Oh, you got a guy coming up behind you with his hand on his weapon. You want me to hey, kill him? We're asking the questions here. It's All not right. a question, it's a statement. Relax, okay? This is more important. You said you were trying to chase someone? Yeah, I what's going on with the guy? What's that? As he's talking to me, what's going on with the guy behind him? He's still walking right up towards you. Okay. I'm going to ready an action. Okay. If that guy pulls his gun, I'm going to throw a throwing knife at him. Okay. Just right between the two guys. Like, hey, we got a question for you. Uh, one second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, the character, as you, as you and the guard are yeah. kind of going back and forth, you, he takes uh, the figure that's walking up behind them, gets about three feet behind the guards, takes a stance, and goes for his gun while saying, reach for the sky, sky, sky. Okay, I said I was going to throw a throwing knife at this guy if he pulls his gun. So the moment he does, I try to put a throwing knife like in it. <laughs> okay, uh, roll an attack for that. I haven't used one of these yet. Uh, throwing knife plus seven. I assume it's, you said how far away from us? Uh, at this from, you get 10 feet. I mean, he's pretty close. I just know there's a range. They don't have a very good range. No, I know, but he's, he's very close. Okay, 12 plus seven. So 19. 19. Okay, you whip this throwing knife as it goes right between the two guards who th throw their guns also in your direction, unsure of what you're trying to do. Whoa, whoa, easy. And the knife plunges into the character behind them. And as it does, it just <laughs> falls to the ground. The two guards look behind him, roll, roll look back at you, <laughs> and just start cackling, laughing. What just, ha what just happened? Uh, uh, something funny, I guess. This is your first time in Never Rust, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah. They can't hurt you? Come on. Can you hurt me? Yeah. Oh. And I've hurt before. Okay, wait, wait, hold on now. It, what, what was that? Who is that? 
That's just one of the automatons. We got them all over the place. They're here for flavor. And they just shoot at people? No, the gun ain't loaded. I check the gun. Well, shouldn't you have like a, a sign or something to like warn people before you just start having weapons? Everybody knows that that's the gimmick here. But we don't. We don't. We've never been here before. That's why I was trying to find out what your business is here. Oh, okay. Is it like some sort of game to be here? No. Game, no. Why do you have why do you have just robot people running around for flavor? Well, because our mayor thought it was gonna be a good idea, thought thought it would raise the morale of everybody. Let me guess, there's gonna be a mayor who's kind of a pain in the ass here. Well, we love our mayor. Oh, okay. But maybe not. All right. Democratically <laughs> elected, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh, excellent. Do the robots that's vote? Rare. Robots can't vote. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so they're like not really people. No, the robots. They're automatons. Oh, okay. okay. So what do they do? They just come up and tell you to reach for the sky? Some of them. Is it what are you supposed to do? You play back. You laugh. You take a you take a photograph. <laughs> Really? We got photographs. You know what a photograph is? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna. We got a lot of stuff here you've probably never seen before. Wow. Okay. Uh, is there like some sort of tutorial we can like get on like what to do? And yeah, how do I turn on and off tutorial mode? Where we come from, <laughs> when someone sh puts a gun in our face, we kill them. So like, is that okay, or do we have to like not do that? No, it's fine. We'll just someone will pick him up. Oh. All right. Uh, just one second, and I go over and I. Pull my knife out of them. Mm -hmm. Put it back in my my holster. Yeah, that's fine. As my you do, a little puff holster. of steam goes <laughs> out of the hole. Is that supposed to happen? And you could hear, yeah. I I don't know. Normally, when I stab things, blood and viscera comes out of them. So and this you, is new for me. You see two other humans walk up and grab each side of the downed automaton, one by its head, one by its legs, and start to carry it off to clear the street. Does it look obvious that it is, like, a different creature? Does it look human? Mm, it look like, pretty there's human. There's no, like, yeah. sprockets and no. shiny. And, no, like, it's pretty human. Hey, Matt, how much XP did I get for that? <laughs> one. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> All right. You're lucky you got that. <laughs> Let me just add that to the list there. One second. Just need to... Okay. That was not a good sound. No, it was not. <laughs> <laughs> you said you were looking for someone? Uh, yeah, we're the the regulators uh, back where we come from. We're, we're kind of like a gang that kind of helps uh, keep keep the peace. And we got we got someone on on the run. Yeah, I mean, not like a gang. We're, 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 an, we're an organization that's hired out to, to handle, uh, you know, uh, problems. Usually. The, yeah, but gang know, sounds cooler. So we go. It by does. That. But like gangs also like they're like. You know, they do we're trying that. to beat that. We're like the stereotype. law. A good gang. In a lawless we're the frontier. Good gang. As you two are talking, the guard sighs and he reaches his hand up, grabs a lever and pulls on it. And a loud steam whistle <laughs> announces. John Rambo throws a knife at it. <laughs> <laughs> Ting! It, it's, it clatters off. Stop of, of doing that. <laughs> I'm jumpy. Keep those knives to yourself. Wait here, please. All right. What, what do we do? We gotta wait. You told us to wait. Okay. How long do we wait for? You start to hear commotion in the Poor crowd. Horses are so tired. <laughs> you start to hear commotion in the crowd, and you start to look over in that direction, seeing what's going on, and you see a man walking towards you down the bustling street. His movements smooth and fluid despite the clunking gears and whirring pistons that make up his lower half. Where flesh and blood once were, there's now a refined and quite elegant mechanical creation that resembles the working of a Victorian-era machine. As he walks, the man catches the attention of everyone around him. They all smile and nod, greeting the man with a howdy or a good day, admiring the intricate details of the metal legs and the steam that billow out from the various valves and pipes. The man himself seems unfazed by the attention, his face beaming with a wide grin, contorting the finely manicured facial hair that zigs and zags all across his face. It was clear that he had grown used to the adoration, stares, and whispers that followed him wherever he went. Despite the obvious mechanical nature of his lower half, 
the man moves with a grace that belied his mechanical parts. He steps up onto the curb, easily navigating the uneven surface. His boots clang against the street in heavy, rhythmic steps, and the sound echoes off the nearby buildings. It is clear that the man's mechanical lower half was more than just a mere curiosity. It was a part of him, a piece of his identity that sets him apart from the rest of the world. And yet, he wore it with a quiet pride, unashamed of the machine that had become part of him. Well, what do we have here? Greetings. Welcome to Never Rust. Uh. He- hello there, uh, sir. Are you gonna pull a gun on me, too? Whoa, now why would I go and do something like that? Because that one pulled a gun on me, and I point over at the robot being carried away. Oh, so I see you have met one of my automatons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, we had... Ha- Just a little something I cooked up for the town. Give it a little extra flavor. Okay, so you built those? I did. And you built them to just, like, walk around and threaten people? No, some do. It's mostly for the kids. Make them feel... Oh, where's the ones for the adults? (laughs) Well, the ones for the adults more help out with daily activities. That's what I meant. Yeah. You know, to help with the work. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) Um. Not to be rude, but, uh, what's with your legs? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oh, these old things? Daisy, you can't just ask somebody what's with their legs. (laughs) Well, I can't stop staring at them. Well, unfortunately, back in my earlier days, I did have a bit of an incident. Okay. Did you get cut in half? No, it was more of an explosion. You got exploded in half? I did. I got exploded right in half. Oh, oh man. I've seen the half in the people. You have? Yeah, you actually, there's more of you left than you most. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very controlled explosion, you see. Yeah, honestly, you're kind of lucky. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know if I consider myself lucky, but luckily, in my case, my genius, my brain, was saved from the explosion. I still had the use of my hands and arms as well, so put that to good use. Came up with these beauties. So you're like a spider drider rider? I don't know what that means. Oh, well, D&D, there's a thing called a drider. It has like a spider bottom, but 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 an adult top. Is there something arachnid looking about my How many legs are there? Appendages? I don't think he said that. I thought there were multiple legs. I said there are multiple legs. There's two of them. (laughs) Yeah. He didn't ever say that. Never mind. Was, that, that actually happened. <laughs> I thought Matt. I thought Matt was saying it was like a bunch of like spider legs. No, I think we were inferring Just, that it was because oh, okay. I think we know what, what yeah, he's what, trying what to he's do. trying to do. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, but no, he's just yeah. a regular. And old, where are my he, man? When he said boots. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I was wondering. <laughs> I was like, boots? I was like, all the little spider feet have boots. How many, how many boots? <laughs> I do. Oh, that would be adorable, wouldn't it? <laughs> Hold on. Let me make a quick note here about something. <laughs> <laughs> they better all have boots. That's my evening legs. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, don't mind that. Puts his pocketbook back in his vest. Now, I do apologize. My hospitality has seemed to be taking a hit. My name is Malicious Repellent Odious, but to my friends, you could call me Mayor Odious. Mayor Odious. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm nice s- to meet you. Uh, I'm sorry, you said your name was Malicious? Malicious? Uh-huh. Repellent. Repele? Repelent. R E P E L L E N T. R E P E L L E. Okay, like, all right. Odious. You're going to probably have to spell that for him, too. He's not real good. Why am I, wait, why am I even spelling this? I don't know. Uh, I, yeah, it don't make no sense. It just seems like your name is Malicious Reptile. But. <laughs> Well, that's not, that. my middle name does not spell reptile. It kind of, well, listen, I don't know how to write. He's so not very you good. look over and John, has, he doesn't even have pencil. He's just like tracing it in his abs. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm just, just not really understanding Okay. Well, this. it's nice to meet you, Mayor Odious. Uh, my Thank name you. is Daisy. Uh, mm-hmm. You probably have heard of me, uh, Dead Eye Dunn. Well, unfortunately, I have not. Okay. Well, you know, 
it's fine. Maybe you don't read a lot or go many places. You probably just haven't explored much because I've there's like a lot of stories about me and how great I am. She's really famous. I and then s- John I... subtly shakes his head like, no, she's not. Mm. He tries like, to do it like so she can't see. <laughs> I see. So my boys here called me over for a reason. What, what can I do for you? I'm, I don't know. Ask your boys. I didn't ask them to do that. I think because we... Boys, why'd you call me over? Well, well boss, uh, they said they are looking for someone. Yeah, that's right. Oh, is that so? Yeah. Well, whoever could you be looking for? I'm sure I could help you find them. Well, uh, there is, he's kind of like this tall. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh-huh. he's got a mustache. Mm-hmm. And he also... Uh, he has a cowboy hat. Not a lot of people around here have one cowboy of Cowboy hat. Mm. And uh, he also... Um, uh, was able to run on foot faster than a horse can travel in the middle of the night. With an un- with an ungodly gait that can't possibly be anything. And but he might plot. try to fight people. I th- we think maybe he's a bad. He might yeah. be a bad guy. He might be undead. Well, I'll look around. There's no one here all fitting that description. Well, he came this way, and uh, we got we got to find him. Are there like tracks just going like into town? <laughs> They led in this direction. Yeah, they, okay, they yeah. led right here. So, and he's, he can be, we think he's probably pretty dangerous. So, um, we're trying to uh, regulate him, I think. I see. Yeah, we need to hunt him down and figure out, you know. He's our boss. So, we know his moves and his, all his like things and things he would do normally. Well, he DM, was our boss. Just in case. Until he like. We know his strategies. You know, started killing people. Mm. The end result is, is we've been traveling all night till John, we got here. He's doing that sound that he makes when he doesn't like what we're saying. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, lots uh, of people make sounds they don't like when I'm doing things that uh, they don't like. Usually it's like, no, God, please stop stabbing me. And then they're quiet. I cannot recall anyone, cannot recollect what you are speaking of. So I'm sorry, but it does not seem like anyone that manner is here. Well, well, then we guess we'll have to look elsewhere, but we've been traveling all night, so can we just come on in, get feed, and get the horses, get some supplies? and Maybe, maybe we'll we can be. ask around just to see if anybody else has maybe noticed anything you might have missed. Spend a few silver while we're here, and then we'll be on our way. Oh, no, he's making the sound again. I guess that could be arranged. No problem at all. Please, come on into my wonderful town. Th- thank you. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, all right. So don't kill the automatons. No, you can kill them, I guess. That's fine. If that's what gets your key, because again, it's more for the children. Okay. So, so don't, so don't kill the children. Yeah, that's always right. the case. Do no, I need right. to kick you out of my town no, already? He's, no, no. Like I'm I said, just he's, getting things straight. You got robots walking around pulling guns on people. This place is weird. He's real tired and real thirsty. And and I don't kill kids. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said that out loud. <laughs> just want to clarify it Doesn't that. make that suspicious <laughs> whatsoever. Nope. Hmm. Never done it once. That's actually true. I haven't. <laughs> Roll a perception check, the two of you. Okay. Perception, you said? Mm-hmm. Do you want to clarify that John Rambork has not killed a child? 17 plus 6. Yeah, uh, you got me there. 13 plus uh, 7. Okay. So 20 and 23? Yes. Still very good rolls. Um, while the mayor is welcoming you to his town, uh, you can see two groups of people that are starting to amass on opposite sides of the main street going down the town. And on one side, the members amassing there are clad in blue leather jackets adorned with metal buckles, straps, and gears. Underneath, they have a button-up shirt with a high collar and ruffles paired with fitted trousers and brown leather suspenders. Fingerless gloves with brass wires cover their hands, and the air around their clenched fists seem to reverberate and hum. They each wear a metal coil strapped to their backs, 
and you can see what appears to be lightning spiraling up and around it every few seconds. On the other side of the street, you see a mob of, a mob of figures donning orange vests with two pocket watches crossed the front of them. Their knee-high boots are attached with heavy metal buckles and look rugged and worn. Top hats sit on their heads, each with a small mechanical engine attached that create a constant plume of steam. Now alone, this doesn't seem like a very useful effect, but when standing together in the group, the steam amalgamates into a thick, murky haze that washes out the silhouettes of each member, making it difficult to place the exact location of any particular shape or body. And it seems like these two groups are getting more and more agitated with each other. What's going on over there, Mayor? What? Oh, uh, excuse me. Uh, one moment. The mayor looks up to the tall clock tower that is in the center of town and makes a quick little finger motion. And the face of the clock opens up and a chair pops out that slides to the platform that the clock face is now making. And you see someone, a guard, you can assume, sitting up there with a cylindrical thing pointed in the direction as it spins towards where these two groups are standing. And you hear a a whirring noise as a flurry of bullets come firing down in the middle of the street and ricochets and catches everyone's attention as everybody hits the deck, including the two groups of people standing on each side of the street. As the gun and releases two big puffs of steam from either side of it as it seems to be cooling down, the mayor takes a few mechanical steps forward, says, Now, boys, this is nor the time nor the place to be having these sort of antics. Please disperse immediately or further force might have to be used. I'm sure you understand. As the two groups sneer at each other and run off, not wanting to have to deal with another round from the machine above. Well, howdy, partners, and welcome to another middle break of Tall Tales. Yes, yes, I know you were probably expecting another episode of New Crits on the Block, but before we got to our recording day, a couple members had some personal things to interview, so we had to call a little bit of an audible. So we got you the next installation of your favorite D&D Western, Tall Tales, and we do hope you are really, really enjoying it. It's fun to be back in the DM's seat. It's stressful, but hey, you know what? It's a good time, and we hope that you're having a good time along with us. Let's get to how you can help our podcast grow and the few ways that we would really appreciate you doing that. First and foremost, subscribe, rate, and review to our podcast wherever you get our podcast from. Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever podcatcher you use, Go on to that podcatcher, leave a five-star review, hit that subscribe button, and then leave a nice little write-up about why you like our podcast so other people can see all the reasons why all of you, our amazing fans, love us. Another thing you can do is follow us on all of our social media platforms. You can find us on Twitter at New Crits. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at New Crits on the Block. We are constantly posting content onto those sites, behind the scenes footage, fan art clips of some of our favorite episodes. The best ways you can do to help us grow there is either by sharing that content to your pages or by tagging people that you think might enjoy that content as well. We're only growing through word of mouth. So right now, the best way to do that is just spread spread the good word. The best way to do that is from your own soul. It's super easy. Just, just help us out. I know it's small and I know it's sort of asking a lot, but I promise you it will help us continue to do these podcasts and make amazing things for y'all. One of the ways we'd like to give back is we have our own 
New Crits Discord, where it's a Discord for all things New Crits, but not all things New Crits. Of course, you can come in there if you want to talk to other fans, you want to talk to the cast members, if you want to talk about the podcast itself, but if you just want to come in there and just chill and hang out, we got plenty of other opportunities to talk about pretty much anything else under the sun. We have made a really safe, inclusive space for anybody to join and hang out and have a good time. We're really proud about what we have done. Now, you might be thinking, well, man, I want to do all these things you mentioned, but how do I get to all the places that you just talked about? Well, from our link tree, of course, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Nucrits on the Block. It'll get you to all the places that I mentioned and some places that I didn't even have time to mention. L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Nucrits on the Block. It is a central hub for all things new crits. All right, everyone, let's get you back into this week's episode of Tall Tales. We got three more episodes after this one, four in total, for this next little mini arc of our Western, and we really do hope that you enjoy it. Let us know in that Discord if you're enjoying it, what characters you're liking, what characters you're happy to see again, and what characters you're interested to know more about. As you know, we come out with new episodes every single Monday, and even if two people are missing from the podcast, that ain't stopping anytime soon. We want to keep this steam train a rolling for you all. So with that, we will see you next week. Thank you so much for listening this week. We love y'all. Stay safe out there. Be excellent to each other. Bye bye. That was effective. That was cool shit. You, you got one of those? No, I, I need one of those. I do apologize. There's a, just a bit of a worker's dispute going on. I pay them no mind. Uh, they pop up every once in a while. But we do have things in place to quell such emotions. Well, why don't they get along? What are they disputing over? Uh, again, it's it's a work dispute. It's a label thing. I'm sure you understand. I do not have the time to explain all the inner workings of that. Unfortunately, I do have to go again, being the mayor of this town. Okay. Uh, well, I guess thank you for your time. And welcome to our wonderful town of Never Rust. Thank you. If you if you hear anything suspicious about that character we described, mm. uh, please please let us know right mm. away. Oh, you trust me. You will be the first person I tell. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Okay. Toodaloo. Oh, uh, yeah. Ta-ta. And he walks back into town. Again, everybody saying hello as he passes by. Okay. Well, this place is fucking weird. All right. I guess let's just go to the saloon and try to ask around. I, I mean, I don't know. It's a uh, worst case scenario. We refresh and check the surrounding terrain. I want, I want to get the scoop on those, those workers over there. Don't you? No. Well, maybe they can help us. Look at all the stuff they have. Uh, that's not why we're here. I want one of those hats. I, what? Yeah, you do, yeah, I mean. It would look so cool on I me. Mean, you know that. You want a steam hat? Okay, we're going to the saloon. All right, we're going to the saloon. Saloon? Yep. Okay, yeah, you type your horses outside as they drink from the trough, having a much-deserved drink as they really start to quench their own thirst. You walk into the saloon and it's the exact sort of same aesthetic as the rest of the town is. It is a combination of machine, leather, and wood, brass, rivets, and tubes circle the bar as you look over the bartenders who aren't pouring drinks. They are taking drinks out of a box that when they pull an item out of, you can see frost on the cylindrical shapes as they put them into these mnemonic tubes and take them around. You can see them all drinks whirring around at the same time and they pop out to whatever table ordered the drink as the people grab them, crack them open and start to drink. Wow, wait, look at that. All right, that's kind of cool. Uh, Could you oh. imagine? Oh my God, Jasper would love this. Oh, Holy man. moly. It's Roll a perception check. 13 plus six. 13 plus seven. Okay, 19 and 20. God, your guys' perceptions are really good. Okay, yeah. as you look around the room for a table to sit, down at um there's a couple empty spots you can kind of have your your pick of, of a few spots in the room 
there is a figure in there that you have seen before. And it's your good friend, Bart Parchment. (laughs) I I almost said I throw a knife at him. (laughs) (laughs) Look, there's Bart. He's here. Oh my God, that's like serendipitous. Who would have ever thought he would have been here? What's serendipitous mean? I don't know. I'll explain later. Let's go run over there. Uh, Bart, hi. Hey, remember us? Bart slowly turns and looks towards you and... His demeanor seems a bit different than the last time you saw him. It's, it's a bit heavier, a bit more steeled than was before. Hey, hey there, bud. H- how you doing? And he sits at a table with about four other rugged, rough-looking men. Oh, well, howdy. And ain't my good friends, Daisy and John, we meet again. Hi there. Yeah. Uh, what, what you doing here? I'm on the trail of something. Yeah, us too. Oh, is that? Uh, what are you looking for? <laughs> you wouldn't believe me if I told you. No one ever has. Well, you could try. We always listen to you, Bart. Do you? Yeah. Does anybody? We, we love listening to you. you. You have great, great poetry. I understand you listen to me, but you don't. Hear me, or is it the other way around? I, I never other, really know. I think it's the other way around. Yeah, but you said, "Listen, I just had to just roll with it." Look, the point is, all right. I guess it wouldn't be too crazy if I told you, because I've told you before. If you remember, I told people I'd run in the goddamn vampire. You you did mention that, yeah. Uh huh. Mm hmm. And the four other gentlemen around. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. That's right, boys. That's right. That's right. And after our last run-in, rumors were there was a vampire running a gang just outside of town. And I knew I'd seen one before. So I followed that rumor. And guess what I stumbled upon? What? Vampire's Lair. Okay. Uh, All right. But there went no vampire in it, which means he escaped and he's on the loose. Where where was this lair? Back in the town I saw you at before, just outside. Was it the big dusty area? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we killed that vampire. (laughs) I don't think you two have what it takes to kill a vampire. Oh, no, we do. No, no, Definitely. We, we, I got like three different guns for that. Yeah. Three what? Three different guns. Ah, Thank yeah. you. <laughs> she already started drinking. <laughs> Sorry. I was just so nervous. No, we listened to all your bones and stuff, and then it, it <laughs> turns out one of them was true. Poems, what a fool I was. Uh, it was really helpful, actually, but sure. <laughs> Why would you say that, Bart? You were so talented. I have a new calling now. Oh, no. What is it? Hunting. Vampires, werewolves, other the lack. <laughs> okay. O- other things, you know. So you don't you don't make any pretty little poems anymore. Those you know, days are behind me. You don't write nothing. Well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you write something, don't you? But right now, that's not important. Okay. You are sitting in the presence. The greatest band of vampire hunters there ever was. And that's what we call ourselves. The Hunters. Humans united in nocturnal threat eradication, response, and safety. Oh. What does that spell? It spells Hunters. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's clever. See, he's still doing poems. That's pretty good wordplay there, Bart. Okay, thank you. I mean, I do have I do have to get my creative outlet out somehow. I know, oh, of course. In there. You, don't, you, you don't do that. It's not good for you. Right, thank you. you. Can't okay. squash that yeah. out. Can't squash that out. It brings your light to your light. It does right. indeed. You no, know, you, you gotta have it. Yeah, you okay. Can, you can take you can take the poet out of the hunter, but you can't no wait. Nope. Backwards again. No, okay. <laughs> We're all backwards here, but I can understand that. But I picked up the trail of that vampire who escaped. And I tracked him here. 
Well, he didn't escape. We killed him. We, I put a stake through his chest. No, John, huh. I, I think he's talking about again. I, you didn't. You think you did because you're not. You're not a certified vampire hunter. Okay, you haven't taken the training. You haven't taken the classes. You haven't put in the necessary hours. You haven't done your apprenticeship. There's a lot of things you don't know. And what I know is that I tracked a vampire here to this town somewhere. He's hiding, sneaking, slinking, thinking about killing. Oh, we got some good rhyming going on too, Bart. <sighs> I just Look can't help myself. All oh, right. I'm so okay. proud of you. Okay. Uh, what, one second. Can I just, can I just have a little, uh, a little sidebar here with my, my, my pal? Yeah, well, what, just, what did I say? No? No, just one second. I'm okay. Here, and I'm going to just grab John and whisper in his ears like, hey, do we tell him we're looking for the same one or do we not tell him? Oh, she's, he's right. I don't have Vampire Hunter on my character yeah, sheet. Like, John, look at me. What? Oh, Focus. sorry. Okay. Do we tell him that we are also looking for a vampire? That we know what he's looking for? Uh, I mean, do we want him to help us kill our boss? I don't want to kill my boss at all, but I think I have to. Maybe you can help us make him a not vampire? Is that a thing? I don't know. You know who might know? The guy who's certified? The guy who's certified <laughs> okay, that's... in vampires. All right. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, thank you. Uh, Bart, sorry about mm, that. Yep. Um, so we're also looking for a vampire, and we tracked him here too. So can we join your hunter gang? I would like to be certified. Is there? Is it a feat? Is there? Can we? There's a hefty fee. Is there a no fe a feat? Ah, a feat. Yeah, like I gotta put it on my paper. <laughs> can no. we pay? Can we pay to have like expedited service? That's not how it works. Okay. Uh, well, we did track him here, so like maybe we get like a, a prerequisite. How'd you treatment? track him? With his feet. But we we followed him from we, town. He, he he killed someone, and then we we followed him. He, he, and killed, he, ran he killed here. one of our men. Well, it was Rusty, you know. And Rusty was sweet. All right. He was I'm, sweet. Probably the vampire. It pains me to say this. I've, I don't want to say it out loud because then I, I might cry. But I think I think it was Tostito. Well, then he has to be put down. I don't want to think about that part. My butt, my Sorry. Boss. He's so, there must be something we can do. There's nothing him. you can do. He must be put down. You want to help us find your boss and kill him? No. I mean, yes. Because that's no. what we're fixing to do. I just, could we, we, could we talk to him, see if maybe we could just sit somewhere? There ain't no talking to oh. goddamn vampires. Bart, you have to understand, he's, he's my hero. You have to understand. Man, you knew. He's gone. <laughs> Man, a crazy look on his face. He ain't <laughs> never coming back. There's, what if we could just break the curse or something? Or let's like put him on a leash or something. You know? Yeah, what like, if we just give him like ho horses or something to eat instead? Look, I saw the horses just like. <laughs> well, not, those, not those ones. Bad, bad ones that don't <laughs> like people. <laughs> bad horses. <laughs> we can go to the bad horse general store. We could just we could hunt for him like deers and and things and bring him that food if he promises not to hurt anybody. I think he's that's just good... trying to explain how we're going to take care of him. Kind of answers our question for us. How do you how do we plan to do all that? If you want to join us and kill him, sure. I I cannot can I join you and maybe not kill him? Nope. Okay, that's all I needed to hear. Sorry. No, wait, I'm not. Positions the... full. You, there's a John chair. stabs the guy next to him. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you got an opening. <laughs> Seats open. <laughs> no, I just, it's, I'm sorry. I'm struggling with it, like I said, because he's my hero. But I, we have to do what's right. And we can't let him bite anybody else. So can you teach me your ways? Please. So you can save him? That's a negatory. I'm not going to save him. I'm going I don't to, believe you. Well, but you have to cuz You just said you can't save him. So what's the point of trying? Yeah. You wouldn't do what you had to do when time was right. I will. You ain't got the gumption. 
I got the gumption. Tostita would want me to do it. I can see it in your stupid little eyes. My stupid little eyes. My eyes are beautiful. Mm, they're stupid. Oh. They might be beautiful, but they are stupid. <laughs> no. Is he hitting on you? I don't know. I no. feel bad. This is like one of those things where he tells you you're pretty, but then he also like. Oh, like nagging. Yeah. What? It's called nagging. Is that a thing? Well, yeah. <laughs> and sadly, it works well. <laughs> He cleans up. <laughs> it really does. I, I feel bad, but man, it works. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. I Hit him know. with a neg and give him a little line of poetry. That's it. Oh, Bart. <laughs> That's it. We have so much to discuss. Okay. But again, uh, those days are behind me. Now, I will kindly ask you to leave. But I just, please, Bart. Uh, I will kindly ask you to leave. Come on, Dad. I let's get a drink and get out of here. All right. Um. Well, if if you change your mind, uh, we we're we right over there. And we okay. sit down two feet away from him. <laughs> <laughs> he looks over his shoulder as you walk off. A vampire hunter never changes his mind. <laughs> That's the first part. Of okay. the, anyways, so I don't want to talk to you anymore. He's Go actually away. helping us. We got one part. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Okay, we got tracking down. Okay, we got tracking. We got the one rule. Never change your Shut mind. your beautiful mouth, Bart. <laughs> you loquacious bastard. <laughs> Talks to himself. I was talking to the boys. Oh, <laughs> Go away from me. <laughs> I'm done. Sorry, sorry. So as you sit down at the table, the apparatus next to you has a menu built into that pneumatic tube opening. And basically you can put in whatever payment you need, whether it be copper or silver for the high, more top shelf stuff, mm -hmm. plop it into the little coin slot there and press the button corresponding to which drink that you want. And as it does, you see the bartender look towards the register and you hear a little ding of a bell and a icon pops up corresponding to the drink that you ordered. He turns, presses it down, reaches in to the cold box walks over to your table numbers tube, thump, puts it into the tube. It shoots its way spiraling across the ceiling of the bar and thump, pops out right at your table. Well, that was, that was pretty cool. Uh, it was pretty cool. I'm not paying for the drink and I'm paying for the show. Yeah, that's usually the case at a fancy place like this. Yeah. These craft cocktails, you know. I'm kind of more into the dive bar kind of thing, but this is nice, I'll admit. All right, well, bottoms up. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's have a toast to Tostito. Uh, to our boss, the best blood-sucking monster I've ever met. Cheers. May he, may he rest easy someday, his sweet immortal soul.